Hey guys, and welcome back to The Curious Curators. I'm Hope. And I'm Lindsay. And today, we are coming at you with another historically inaccurate movie. Yay. I don't know why I said it like that. So this week, we're going to talk to you about A League of Their Own as we continue our five-episode series on Women's History Month. Since there are five Tuesdays. Yes, this is a busy month for us. Five whole Tuesdays. Can we just talk about how Black History Month got the shortest month of the year? It really did, like, unnecessarily as well. And we messed up our scheduling, so that was our bad. Yeah, so we only ended up doing three because (laughs) we talked about Anastasia. Oops. Yes, we are definitely sorry about that because I didn't even realize. I feel like I didn't realize it was February. Yeah, me either. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, it's February. But I don't feel like it's March either. I feel like, no, I feel like 2020 lasted for ages and 2021's gone by way faster than yeah. I thought. Have you seen all those memes that are like, we're just going to let March come back after everything that's happened? And I'm like, I agree. March is going to be, I think, now the month that just makes me nervous. I mean, fair. I'm nervous. Like, this time last year, chaos erupted. Yeah. So I'm like, can we just... I think pretend? we're still just short of the chaos. We are. I think chaos is still in full swing here in... The good old U.S. of A. Yeah. Tennessee, where, however you want to phrase that, in the world. Chaos never leaves. It really doesn't. Um, and I like to think that I thrive in chaos, but not right now. This is not no. the kind of chaos that I thrive in. So, yay. Welcome to 2021. Here we are again with the, it's the, 19, it's the 20s. Things are going to be great. And I'm like, mm. Definitely. The Roaring Twenties in a very different sense. A very different sense. We can only hope that in the late 2020s, fantastic things happen. But I guess we can go ahead and jump forward 20 years or 30 years to the 40s and 50s. Okay. (laughs) Or backwards, some 80 some odd years. I know you're trying to make a transition (laughs) statement. I was. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Transitory (laughs) statement. It was a fail. Yes, so anyway, A League of Their Own. Um, If you did not know, A League of Their Own is based on a true story. I looked at Lindsay like she didn't know, but clearly she did the research for this podcast as well, so I hope she knows that it was based on a true story. If not, If not, I'm not sure what we're doing today. I could could sit here and pretend I don't know anything and just let you teach me all about A League of Their Own. So I can say things like, and then Madonna said... (laughs) So, um, A League of Their Own has some great names, I would definitely say. This movie actually... Maybe we should establish what A League of Their Own is. Is. Okay, so A League of Their Own is a 1992 film. It is a sports comedy, I would call it, about the all-American girls professional baseball team. League. League. That is a mouthful. You got almost there. It's a mouthful. You were there until the very end. And this was formed... During World War II, yeah. um, to kind of combat the fears that baseball and other American pastimes would fall by the wayside because men were at war. And this movie follows one of the teams, the Rockford Peaches, mm-hmm. through their first season in this league. And that would be 1943. And it is got, I think it's got a little bit of everything. It's got, you know, the sibling rivalry thing that I think a lot of movies will play into. There's a bit of romance, sort of. There's, you know, strong yeah. female friendships, yeah. um, a little bit of sad stuff, yeah, and some comedy thrown in for good measure. Yeah. I feel a lot less that it has, I mean, <clears throat> there is romance, but it's just kind of... It's off-screen romance. Yeah, it's like so-and-so is married. Yeah, or, or like waiting for her husband to come home or yeah. whatever. So it's, it's off-screen romance, but there's, I guess, the romantic feelings. That's the least of it. Like, oh, absolutely. And there's, of course, sports. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of sports. I mean, as far as sports movies go, at least I understand baseball at its yes. core concept, so I was able to follow along. True, true. I, I understand it as well. Unlike um, when we reviewed Hidden Figures, which is about math, and I'm just sitting there going, I don't know if that's... That's that, true. Those numbers look impressive, but I'm not a rocket scientist. Exactly. Uh, I definitely agree with that. But I do think that... It was easy to understand and like easy to like palatable, I guess. It was it's a good movie. It's I like it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And it has some pretty big names in it. It's got Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, Lori Petty, those are like five Mm -hmm. of the there's a lot of people in there. Yeah. 
I will definitely star studded cast. It really is. And this movie actually one of the few that we've done that's well received by critics too. Um, it has a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes and is being preserved as a part of the U.S. Film Registry. Yeah, and it was it was enjoyed by not just critics, but audiences, too. Yes. Because um, you get a lot of those movies that are well-received by critics, but not by the general public. Yeah, or that the general public, or that critics hate and the general public loves. Yeah. Which, that, that is They usually, don't usually agree. That's usually how I feel about films. Like, Troy was a critical flop, and... I loved it. Love it. <laughs> but I I really did like this. I thought it was really interesting. And, like, I remember watching this when I was younger and not knowing that it was, like, based on a true story, but thinking it was really cool. Like, and, of course, as a child, I was like, oh, I love the – I want to wear that. Like, I want to play baseball. Um, and I did play softball for a little while, and our uniforms looked nothing like that. Well, no, I, I, got, I got a little pumped watching it. Even though I have a history of hating baseball and softball, and I never want to play those games ever again. That's fair. T-ball was my nightmare. But when I was watching this, I was like, I want to play baseball. I know. Like, Like, it has a... It gets you pumped. Yeah. It's it's good. It's good fun. It's high energy. um, I did see hmm, one review, and it was not a negative review, but it really annoyed me. And I think that this is often the problem um, with historical films centered on women. And I'm just going to read you the quote. I'm sure I will not be enraged. So this is from a Mr. Pete Travers writing for Rolling Stone magazine in 1992 after A League of Their Own came out. Okay. And he said, A League of Their Own is based on the true story of the All-American Girls Baseball League, begun in 1943 to sub for the men at war. That Mm -hmm. is true. That is fine. Though the teams continued playing ball until 1954, Mm -hmm. the girls mostly marched back into the kitchen when their Johnnies came marching home. Okay. Um, Also, it wasn't until 1988 that they were honored by the Baseball Hall of Fame. Also true. I, I don't think that what he said isn't true. I think the way he said it well is like and a lot of the time it was and this is something we'll talk about a little bit in our next podcast um about women in the 20th century it, it wasn't willingly that they no. went marching into their kitchens yeah and i think that he could have said that so differently and not came off because when I, that's the first like that's the intro paragraph to his article and i was like sir now i don't even want to bother reading your yeah article. Because it just sounds sexist. Yeah. So, I hope Mr. Travers has learned from his mistakes in the past 20 years. And let me, just, let me just point out real quick a statistic from our other podcast research. During World War II, 6.5 million women went into the workforce. 4 million of them were fired in 1946. Fired. Not that they quit. Yeah, they were fired. They were fired. To make room for the returning men. Even though if they hadn't done these jobs, America would have suffered greatly during the war. Right. And I'm just pointing out, they did not, you know, march back to their kitchen because they wanted to. They marched back to their kitchen because they didn't have any other choice. Because they were fired. fired them. But. Anyways. We'll just get into the movie. So we kind of open up with, I guess, who who are going to be our main characters, Dottie and Kit. And they're like playing softball in Oregon or something. Well, even before that, we see Dottie as an older woman in the 1980s, Mm. which honestly, I know the ending was supposed to be uplifting, but I was extremely depressed by it. Everybody died. It was sad. Well, no, it was that Dottie, the main character, um, became like housebound. Like the kids were commenting, like when she came out of the house, they were like, where's the fire? Grandma came out of the house. Yeah, that part was sad. And she never talked to her sister again. Yeah. Like that was... It was, I guess the they were trying to highlight the friendship that they had in the league, but it seems strange to me that, like, she would never speak to her sister again. Or any of the other girls in the league, and she became, like, housebound, agoraph- agoraphobic. Yeah, so, agoraphobic. and then, like, why would she go to that reunion anyway, like? Well, she had to be, like, almost pushed out of the house by her daughter to even go. Still, like, and that like, was just so depressing, like... How did she turn into that? Yeah. What happened in those interceding years to make her that way? Because she was quite outgoing. She was well spoken. Like she She stood up to people. Yeah, and very assertive. Yeah. 
That is sad. I don't know. It was just really depressing to watch because you start off seeing her as an old woman. Yeah. And being so basically... at this reunion at yeah. the very, very, very beginning. And her daughter, the very beginning, her daughter's trying to convince her to go. There's basically, they did it... So sometimes you'll have sports or something where you have a reunion like every year. That did not happen with this baseball league. It was no. much later, like in the 80s, actually. When they got inducted to the baseball hall. That they did meet up again. So I don't know, like... I guess it's a little bit harder to keep in communication with people before the age of social media that we live in today. But I would think that I would have kept in touch with someone. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would think. But I guess I could be wrong. Maybe Anyways, not. we see this opening with this older woman being basically shoved out of her house where she's terrified to go. Which is a super um, uplifting way to start. Which is week. really sad by her daughter um, regarding going to this reunion at the Baseball Hall of Fame for the women's baseball league yeah all american girls professional baseball league <laughs> that's why we use abbreviations because that's yeah. long. well i mean aag pbl is isn't, not isn't short either um, um yeah and then we open at that dairy farm and so this was something quite common that people like women would work on farms and stuff that they lived on and what they did for this all american girls professional baseball league was these recruiters would go around and watch like amateur softball games and they would ask the girls like hey do you want to try out for this new league that we have going on and as we see with Dottie she's like no nah. yeah <laughs> she's like no I don't want to do that but her younger sister Kit is all in yeah and Dottie I think is a better player than Kit yes Dottie is a catcher and a pretty good hit like pretty phenomenal hitter really whereas Kit is a pitcher and but not very strong with... Well, she takes too many risks and tries to hit balls that she can't hit. And I don't know if this is 100% correct now, but, like, your pitcher would be, like, the last person in your lineup that you wanted to bat anyway. Yeah. Because they need to save their arms. So the, yeah. my knowledge comes from fictional books, but usually the sports is quite correct. And that's something I've noticed is that they will save the pitchers for Arm. as long as they can. Um, and also they might not be the strongest hitters because... And apparently the scout did not see Kit pitch during the game. And Kit is like, I want to go. And Dottie's like, mm, loving the cows at the farm, girl. Like, we stay in here. And the baseball scout basically said to Kit, if you can get your older sister to go, you can both come. But you, Kit can't come without Dottie. Yeah. Which I think um, I'm not... Like, like, I've never been in that position, but I would be angry if oh, yeah. that was the case. Um, and also, if my sister said no, I would be absolutely furious. Well, because yeah, but I would still, it's not her obligation to no. say yes to something she doesn't want to do. True. But in the end, Dottie is like, okay, fine, we'll go. Yeah. So they go to Chicago to, I don't remember what the field is called in the movie. I didn't even write it down. The Harvey Field, which and it is, is not Wrigley real. Field. <laughs> yeah, so... This, this whole, in the movie, it, this whole girls' league was orchestrated by a man called Walter Harvey, the candy bar king. Yeah. But he's fictional. In real life, it was Philip Wrigley of Wrigley Gum fame. And the future owner of the Chicago Cubs. Yes. Which is why we have Wrigley Field. So I thought that was a cute nod, though. That they I, they were actually in Wrigley Field for the warm-ups. Yeah, I was, I was kind of wondering why they made that change, but I'm guessing... Um, Maybe they couldn't get the rights to Philip Wrigley's likeness, or they wanted to create something so they could create their own story about it instead of being completely historically accurate because all of the players are made up, but the teams are real. Yeah. The league was real. Um, I wonder if like Wrigley wanted to charge too much or something to use that. Because I don't know what it's like to be able to use names and stuff because I've noticed, like, do you remember Nickelodeon didn't use Apple? They called it, like, Pear. Yes. So yeah. I'm curious if it just costs too much to use that particular name if it's been trademarked. Right. So I don't know if they did it for creative licenses so that they could do whatever they wanted with this figure or if it was a legal or logistical or financial issue. But yeah, it's but. basically one sells, one is a candy bar magnate and one is a chewing gum magnate. Yeah. So it's, I mean, kind of similar, honestly. And they had... Like, 200 girls in real life were invited to try out for this, and 60 would make the cut. 
um, to like six teams of ten. Um, in the movie, we see them walk on the field, and their like handler is like, "All right, see you later." Like, yeah, don't be. He's actually so rude when he's like, "I hate it when they get attached to me." Yeah, he was meant to be a comedic character, and the other girl who ends up coming with the sisters is a woman who is not attractive. Um, and he's very resistant to signing her on. Um, but the sisters refuse to go unless she can go as well. Because she's very good. Yes. She was very good, but she was unattractive. And that, unfortunately, was kind of a prerequisite to being accepted into the girls' league. Yeah. it was. I mean, you were representing Americana. Like, it was that wholesome beautiful thing they had they had ridiculous rules right you all you had to have long hair so we could have done it yeah well you couldn't have short hair i don't know how short short is because it's because madonna's hair is yeah the 1940s is they had shorter hair a lot of times because of the war and the war effort and long hair gets in the way yeah so i'm guessing maybe boy short quote unquote yeah and you had to wear lipstick in public at all times which i don't think they did in the movie no there were several girls i didn't see in lipstick also you weren't allowed to smoke or drink in public and if you recall when we first meet may she is smoking a cigarette while she warms up for baseball practice but then they they tell them that they can't do that yeah so I guess maybe it just would depend. And that was that was real. Like you could not smoke or drink in public. And actually a woman, uh, what was her name? She got fired for cutting her hair too short in 1944. Oh, wow. Um, she was, I think her name was Jojo was her nickname. Um, but she, Jojo D'Angelo was fired for cutting her hair short. Um, she was part of the original 1943 lineup and was with the South Bend Blue Sox. Mm, okay, and all of these teams are said. And she got fired West. the next year because she cut her hair too short. That's so ridiculous because hair grows actually really fast. But, yeah. And we will go ahead and say that these were, I read, informally segregated. Yes, that's so what I read. So they did not recruit African-American women. Because they didn't fit into the standard of beauty. So they didn't recruit them, which means that none were hired. But yeah. that doesn't mean that African American women were not playing baseball or softball no. at this time. It just and that is true in the movie. You also notice that they are all white teams. Yes. Um, and you do have one moment where a black woman pitches to uh, one of the girls. Um, yeah. I forget her name. The one with the long blonde hair. Oh, I don't remember. Her um, and I think she was probably a nod to Mammy Johnson. Um, there were only three women who ever played in the Negro League. So it wasn't like there was a women's Negro League. Yeah. You was... had the Negro League. You had men's, like white men's, essentially. Um, and then you had the women's league. And was it Jackie Robinson broke was it, Yes. Broke, broke the barriers and played for the white leagues. Right. But there were three women who kind of broke the gender barriers and played for the Negro League. Um because there were no opportun- there was no league for black women. Um, and this might have been, this woman might have been a tribute to Mammy Johnson. Um, she was the first female pitcher to play in the Negro League um, in 1953 to 1955. And she was, she was apparent, she apparently had a really hard fastball. Um, and you see in the movie when this black, unnamed black woman throws a ball to them the woman who catches it like is shaking her yeah. hand out because it hurt really bad. Yeah. Um, so that was probably. But the other the other two women, there were only three women to ever do this, were Connie Johnson and Tony Stone. Uh, Tony Stone was the very first woman in the league. Just putting some names out there since this movie was incredibly white. Yeah. Which this is. It couldn't have really been done any other way because it was talking about this a specific- segregated. USA. And like this very specific thing that was segregated. Segregated. So we start to meet the girls when we go to Harvey Field. Yes. We meet my personal favorite character. May, played by Madonna. Yeah, she's my favorite character. And um, Evelyn, Evie, it's an E name. Isn't it? That's played by Rosie O'Donnell. Um, I thought that was Doris. Dor- is that not Doris? That Doris? I think that is Doris. I don't remember. I'm really. I bad. think Evelyn's the blonde girl who caught the ball. I was talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's. See. Oh no, Evelyn. I think was the mom. There was a woman who had to bring her son along. 
Okay, let's see. I don't know. I didn't write the yeah, names. Yeah, Doris is played by Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, my bad. I'm so bad with names in general. Um, so we meet May and Doris, and Doris is kind of some good comedian. She is like comedic relief. She's like balancing the bat and like throwing it up in the air. It's Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. That's kind of the role she plays. And May is like the bad girl. She's wearing like yep. leather baseball pants. With like red lipstick, smoking a cigarette yeah. at the like at the tryout. Um, so hope spirit animal. I love her. I th- I love Madonna. Um, Madonna, if you're listening to this, please hope be my best you. friend. Um, so I know I literally have information about her for the next podcast too because I just can't stop. But I think that's when we kind of start to meet the characters. Dottie and Kit both make the cut. Yes. And get put on the same team. Yay. That has to be horrible. So they are part of the Rockford Peaches. That was a real team. All of them have like girly names. Yes. The Peaches, the Bells. Blue Sox is not that girly. The South Bend Blue Sox. Racine Bells, Rockford Peaches, and Kenosha. Why do I want to say Comets? Comets. Okay. Yep. So two of them had kind of normal names. Comets not. And the others not so much, but... um, I Those are the original teams. Yeah, and I don't know why they picked the Peaches specifically to put them on. I'm not sure if that was they just like the name. They just like the color. You know, I don't know why they picked that particular team. But both girls are on the team. And then we start to see, like, what's going to happen with baseball. Um, also, can we talk about charm school? Yeah. Am I skipping really far ahead? Nope. Okay, so this was real. They were forced to go to charm school at yep. night. And this would be to teach you all types of like mannerisms, how to eat, how to answer questions, how to walk, how to do your makeup. And you see this one part of the charm school scene where all the girls are lined up and the woman walks by and she's like, fix those eyebrows. Oh, she's pretty. That, you know, that hair is gross. Mm-mm. And she walks to the girl that we met at the beginning. I don't remember that poor girl's name. Was it Martha? Maybe it was Martha. Um, the one that is meant to be like the unattractive girl. Yeah. And she's just like, I can't do anything. And I think that part is awful. Like, because the pretty blonde girls are the ones that are said like, it's okay. Really. The yeah. other ones are kind of all told, you need to fix your eyebrows, fix your hair, lose weight, do whatever it is you need to do. And that was real. That happened. They were sent to charm school. Yeah. Um, because and they were beautified. Yeah. They were given makeup and basically told how to use it. Yeah. And that's like, could you? I mean, it brings to mind things like the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Yeah. Um, which is, if you've ever watched the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders making the team, um, you know, they always have to wear makeup and they have to like look so perfect and they have to be able to present themselves a certain way in interviews and all kinds of things. So that's basically the same thing. That is not something that has gone away. It's something that is usually just kept quiet now, I think, that you have to do things like that. Kind of annoys me. I mean, it annoys me. I think it's annoying. Anyway, the charm school scene. And their coach or Mm. their coach is played by Jimmy Dugan, played by Tom Hanks, a fictional character. Uh, Might be based a little bit on... um, Eddie Stumpf, who was the man, a former baseball player, he was a catcher, um, and was the 19, who was an employee of Wrigley, who in 1943 became the coach of the Rockford Peaches. Okay. And Jimmy Dugan is kind of the same way. He's a former baseball player. He blew out his knee. He's an alcoholic. He became an alcoholic. He worked for Harvey. And Harvey was like, I have a job for you. You're going to manage these girls. Yeah, and I saw that there are two other baseball players that they think he could be sort of based on. Okay. Jimmy Fox and Hack Wilson. They were both greats, and they basically lost their careers because they became alcoholics. Okay. So, and I think at the beginning especially, he is such an annoying character. Like, Oh, yeah. He would be awful to be your coach right but you know he has a he has a character arc yeah and i i ended up enjoying him yeah um and one of his lines is like one of the most like a very well-known line in movie history there's no crying baseball (laughs) when he's yelling at this poor girl (laughs) and she's just like crying oh i think it's so funny but i think he is he's awful at the beginning he is yeah a drunk He's, like, falling down drunk. He's so just, he, like, rude. Girls don't play baseball. 
Yeah, he doesn't really want to be there. He doesn't like anyone. Everyone hates him. Yeah. But eventually he... I'm not going to say he fully redeems himself, but he does get better. I read... I read when I was um, doing some research on this that an original scene in the movie had um, Jimmy and Dottie, like, practicing together at night, and they kissed. And then she started crying and ran away because Dottie's husband is at war. Yeah. Test audiences who were made up of actual women from the league were so upset by this that they pulled the scene. Good. Because they were like, why would she do... It's yeah. unnecessary. Why would she do that? And also, like... Just because it's a man and a woman starring opposite each other does not mean they need to have something romantic No, on. especially because such a huge part of her story is that her husband is at war. Yeah. And that's what they said. They were like, no. Like, yeah. this isn't okay. So they ended up... And I actually like that they listened to them and pulled yeah. that scene. Because I, I think that scene would have completely changed the movie. Yeah, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot less because what I really enjoyed was kind of the mentor-mentee flip-floppy relationship yeah. too because Dottie would keep pushing him and she kind of took over his role when he was... Incapacitated. Incapacitated. And then he decided he was going to step in, but Dottie had been coaching. Yeah, and it's... Like, it it would have, I think it would have really just ruined it. It would have ruined it. And I think it would be really difficult to, it wouldn't have made sense with Dottie's character because she was ex- shown to be extremely loyal to her husband throughout. And moral. like And very, very morally moral. upstanding and self-sacrificing. Like, and it wouldn't have made any sense. If he was going to have to be with a character, it would have been like May. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't... I, I mean, that's the way that that... Or Kit. I feel like Kit was so angry with him, with everyone most of the time that she would have beat him to death with a baseball bat. <laughs> well, I mean, that could have been something that was developed over time True. instead, though. True. Because um, Kit was always complaining how the boys didn't really like her, and they all liked her older sister. And Yeah. If you wanted to put a romance in there, definitely not between Dottie and Mm-mm. the coach, because they did not... I didn't see any chemistry there either. No. No. But I do like Tom Hanks in that role. I thought I thought Tom Hanks did a great job. I thought he did a great job. And I was kind of reading just a little bit about these other characters. And they say that Dottie could be based on Dorothy Cammy Kamenshik. Okay. She was the most feared hitter in the league. Ooh. So she was a pitcher, not a catcher, I think. Or an outfielder. I didn't write that part down. Anyway, she played for 10 seasons, and Major League Baseball called her the finest fielding first baseman, even including all of the men. Okay. So she was, you know, the kind of the star of the league at the beginning. So Dottie could be based on her. Honestly, they're probably all something of a conglomeration of a lot of characters because there were a lot of people. And I think, so, as we move through this movie and we see the character arcs with these characters, um, there's a lot of struggles with getting the American Girls Professional Baseball League off the ground. Well, yeah, and and this is, like, this is brand new. They're the first season. Yeah, and they do have um, an advertising agent. He has a fictional name in the movie, but in real life they did have a very good advertising agent called Meyerhoff. Um... And he, he basically did the exact same thing that this man did. He was able to advertise and get special interest in the girls' league, not just as a replacement for the men, but as their own entity and their own place of interest, even if they had to do it by exploiting certain aspects, like you know, the short skirts. Yeah, so the uniforms were accurate. Um, yeah. The uniforms were accurate. Tunic dresses with a flare skirt. And the little team logo. Yeah. And you can kind of see, like... Pastel colors. And you kind of see them, like, playing around in a little bit. That was real. Like, they would have had to... You know, they're always supposed to look like they're, like, going out or something. Yeah. Even on the baseball field. Even I, though they weren't allowed to go out, they had a chaperone. Yeah. Each team... Oh, gosh. Each team had a chaperone. I did kind of read that when they were... Like, the girl that slides and she has that big like road rash basically yeah. on her leg that happened to her like that was real because like you can't play baseball in a skirt no 
I mean, I guess you can if you're, like, going to jog or something. But, like, that is rough. If you've yeah. ever slid across dirt and rocks like that, yeah. it is excruciatingly painful. Yeah. So, um, while the uniforms might have been attractive. So, they're basically based on, like, tennis, figure skating, and field hockey uniforms. Yeah. So, while that might have been, like, attractive and, like, visually pleasing, that is not, it's not practical. Yeah. It's not practical to play baseball in a skirt. Yeah. But uh, they did. So, did the ad guy have a part in designing those uniforms? I don't think he had a part in those uniforms because he was the advertising agent. So, okay. he was primarily focused on publicity. He was the PR guy. Right. Um, you know, so those things where, you know, catch a foul, get a kiss, and all of those would have been him. And his ideas to help appeal to a larger market. Um and he really, he really did kind of save the league from going defunct in the first year. And he stayed on as advertising agent. I think might have been through the entire, uh, the entirety, the all eleven years of the league. Um, wow. But as we move forward, the sisters have a falling out. Consist- consistently, they fight pretty much the whole thing. Right, and they have a big falling out. Kit gets traded to another team, the Racine Bells. The Racine Bells, yes. And she is furious. Yeah. And devastated. Um, and Dottie, being self-sacrificing and morally upstanding, tried to leave. And they said no. So she decided to ask to be traded, but they traded Kit instead. Yeah, and Kit is devastated, angry, betrayed, you name it. Kit, yeah. is, Kit is very upset. Kit is definitely the more emotional of the two sisters throughout the movie yeah. as well. Uh, Dottie has that very, like, stoic type yes. of personality, and Kit is more emotional, more of, like, a firecracker type personality. Yes. So I think that is... Well, of course, they're going to have to do that with sisters. They can't be the same. Right. But I think that's like one of the real, I think that's one of the sad parts of the movie. It's sad. I feel bad for, I feel bad for Kit throughout a lot of the movie. Yeah. The other, the other big sad part too, I think, was uh, when the one woman got Betty uh, notified that her husband had died during the war. Yes. So I think Dottie and Betty are the only two married to soldiers. And this, it looked like, I don't, I don't think so. Or the only two that are really talked about maybe. Because when he came in with the telegram, and the telegram everybody kind of knows, is uh, yeah, you know, at this your point, husband died, and I don't know what they do. And now. several women like sit down in shock, and yeah. I think those are kind of it's meant to be dating soldier or married to soldiers, yeah, as well. or dating soldiers or so whatever. So I will say I do not know what happens like today. I'm I cannot imagine that the telegram is still a thing, where they send someone to no. knock on your door. I can't imagine that that's a thing anymore. Uh, and if it is, you should probably rethink that, um, U.S. military. But for those of you who do not know, especially in earlier wars, I, like I said, I don't know about today. <clears throat> Someone was killed in combat. They will send a soldier mm-hmm. in uniform to your door, and he will knock, and he will ask your name or whatever, and he will give you a telegram. And if a soldier comes to your house in movies and everything else, you know that's what it is. We always know that that's what that means. This guy is an idiot, first off. Yeah, he didn't know the name of who he was supposed to deliver to. Actual bumbling fool. Like, standing there. He has, like, he had one piece he of paper. He had one telegram. That um, we have seen. We have seen. We have them in this museum. We have yep. seen telegrams from World War II. Yep. They have the name at the top. So, keep that in mind when we tell you that this guy was, like... I can't find the name for like five minutes and you're like bro that well all the girls are panicking like, yeah and finally jimmy gets angry and he walks over and he's like give Snatches me this telegram and the guy's like this is my job this is the united states armed forces and he was like get out go like we're not doing this you need to go he reads the telegram and it's such a tense 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, as he walks toward, Betty and Dottie happen to be sitting together. Yeah. Um, and he walks toward them and he is like, Betty, I'm really sorry. Yeah. And you're like, huh? and she just starts like sobbing yeah. and it's really sad. 
Um, and I think he kind of steps up a little bit and he's like hugging her and the team chaperone who's been, you know, marginally useless this entire time is like, let's go, honey. Yeah. And it's, that's a very, that's an awful scene. Yeah. I think that's an absolutely terrible scene. Um, I think that it fits in with the movie because I think that that is something that would have happened. Yeah. Um, I think it's realistic. I think that she acted it well. And a reminder that this was started because of the war. Yeah. Um, like this was and this is in the midst of World War II, before D Day. Yeah. Um, 1943, probably fall of 43. I don't know. Yeah. But I don't know when baseball season is. My deep Dottie's ha- husband returns injured from war, but basically he's been discharged because he got injured. Yeah. Um, she tries to quit, comes back. Yeah, um, like goes play. as far as to get in the car, doesn't yeah. she? And like they drive off, they drive and away, then they yeah. come back. Um, and they go to the championship playoffs. Rockford Peaches versus Racing Bells. Which is... Not um, right. Yeah, it was the Kenosha Comets and the Racing Bells, right? Yes. Don't and, know why they couldn't have fixed that. But anyway. So it, you know, tense moment. They play a good game. Bottom of the ninth, you know, that the kind of stuff. The bases are loaded. And it's finally Kit's turn we to... We know nothing about baseball if you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Kit's turn to hit the ball. Um, and Dottie is the catcher. And... Um, Kit hits it to the outfield. It gets thrown to Dottie to get her out on home base when she's trying to make a home run, and she drops the ball. And Kit, like, runs right over Dottie, yeah. which apparently was legal in baseball until relatively recently. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think that's allowed anymore. No, it's not allowed anymore, but it used to be. So that, and I'm sure to Kit, she was like, ha, yeah, ha, ha. Just, like, smashes her into the ground. Yeah. Wins the game for the Racine Bells. Which... The Racine Bells did win the first one. Yes, so that was... But the Rockford Peaches ended up being the most successful team over the 11 years. They won four championships. Which is, I mean... Just not that first one. Yeah, just not the first one. Um, And clearly, they changed those last two teams, so Dottie and Kit would face off head-to-head there. Right. Um, But I think it's a good thing for Kit that she finally won something from Dottie. Not that I think that Dottie is a selfish character or anything, but... I think that's often the case if you have an older sister and a younger sister in movies and stuff. One of them is, like, the better sister. And the other is, you know, always trying to prove themselves. And Kit was able to prove herself there. Um, So the uh, baseball league went on. um, It eventually grew to 10 teams with uh, 600 women participating over the Midwest. I mean, and I don't know why they were only in the Midwest. Um, The cities are... The cities are relatively close together, I guess. No, they're not. Well, I mean, like... It's not like New England. Well, I feel, I feel like on a map, they're relatively close together. They are not close together. Hope's not from the Midwest. I don't spend much time in the Midwest. <laughs> anyway... Um, I'm from Ohio. They're not close together. They had lots of baseball fields. I really don't know. <laughs> Fair. There's a lot of room. That's true. Maybe that's why they picked it. Or it's central. Well, it was centered in Wrigley Field because Wrigley is the one who made it. So part of the reason, at least early on, for having only those teams based in that area was like transportation rationing, like gas rationing. Oh, right. That's smart. Um, I didn't think of that. So it's having them all in one centralized area, especially during the wartime years, was financially better. And you can't... Gas was rationed. So you you can only have so much. I didn't think about that. That makes... Actually, so much more sense than they're just close together. And so I think it, after that, it was still more financially feasible to have people in the same region centered around Wrigley Field um, rather than expand it to other Texas spaces. or something, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it eventually ended in 1954. It did. And they were later inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in the 80s. Yeah, I like don't looked, write the date. I, I like looked at the Baseball Hall of Fame's website, thinking like there would be like a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying there wasn't stuff, but it was like it's not a specific gallery or anything. Like I had to type in All American Girls Professional Baseball League, oh, okay. and then it just gave me like different like articles and stuff that I could click on. So maybe that is not a digitized thing. I've never been to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Have you? No, I don't even know what city it's in. So. Um, if you are interested in looking up more, it is there, but yeah. it is not like a large gallery that is a lot of things together, which I kind of expected it to be. There um, wasn't, when I looked at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, when we were talking about 
others I didn't find a whole lot on yeah. individuals. So I mean it it's I mean it's definitely something that's worth looking into because it's really interesting and something that probably a lot of people don't know about unless you're like a hardcore baseball fan or something. Yeah. But so, the movie yeah. ends at that reopening and a re uh, reunion for everyone. And like Betty has died. Evelyn died. Bob died. Maybe Betty died. Jimmy died. Yeah. So like, which I always hate. Like, I understand that in like, that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Especially because Jimmy was a bit older than them. Yes. But he was born in 1906. But well, the right. Eddie char- the Eddie person who I believe, I don't think his character was based on Eddie. I think his concept was yeah. Eddie Stump, who was the coach for the Rock, well, uh, Rockford Peaches. And also, he probably had some sort of liver kidney disease with That's like true. all of the drinking that he did. But it's still sad when like some of the kids... I don't know. I feel like it's always sad when some of the characters have died at that like reunion because you always do want to know like what happens to people. Well, everybody dies. Well, I mean, way to be uplifting. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I've got on it. Me too. Um, I did really enjoy the movie. It is I did on, enjoy it. It's on Amazon through Showtime. So if you're interested. Or or you can rent it, I think, on Amazon as well. Yeah, or YouTube, I think, as well. Yeah. So um, this was a good movie. I liked it. I think yeah, we both I enjoyed liked it. it. So that's nice. That's a rarity, as you know. And I guess we will be back next week. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Bye. Bye.